I know, I know, I know. I'm like five months late to this. Greetings, fellow fangirls and crochet enthusiasts. <laughs> like every Harry Styles fangirl and their mom, I happen to fall in love with this infamous cardigan. And if you're under a rock and you don't know, well, may Google assist your lack of knowledge. And though I may be a whole season late, albeit the appropriate season, here's my attempt of finally creating the Harry Styles J.W. Anderson cardigan. Beginning with materials, we have yarn. Colorful yarn. And having to ignore my neutral and black and white color scheme that I buy to very religiously, this wasn't easy. And those colors included yellow, orange, red, green, blue, and black, like my soul. And next up were the buttons, six to be exact, according to the OG cardigan. And obviously, I wasn't knitting this, so I used a J10 6mm crochet hook and a darning needle for backup. And last but not least, a pair of scissors and measuring tape. So to create this cardigan, I first needed the patches, and according to the pattern release by J.W. Anderson, each batch of those colored patches has its own stitch. And I wanted to replicate this, so instead of using those inferior knitting stitches in the pattern, I used five different crochet stitches and in turn kind of adding a little bit of my own touch to this cardigan. Starting off with the red batch, I began with an easy but classic single crochet stitch. With my yarn, I wrapped it around my two fingers and then I took the long strand and put it over the loop that was created. And then using my crochet hook, I sticked it through the loop so that I could take that strand of yarn out and then I pulled the pieces of string tight so that it would create a knot and this is known as the slip knot. And then I would wrap my yarn around my crochet hook and went through that loop. That is known as a chain. So wrap the yarn and through the loop. So for this particular batch, I used 14 chains as a foundation because with this yarn weight and the stitch type, I found that it was the closest to make the width about five to five and a half inches, which is around 13 to 14 centimeters. And hence each batch of colored patches has a different chain amount. But really the goal was to make each patch around five to five and a half inches in width or 14 centimeters, according to the pattern. So to make a single crochet, I went into the chain next to the one I was in, yarned over, came out, had two loops on my crochet hook, and then yarned over and went through both of the loops. So again, I went into the chain next to it, yarned over, came out and had two loops, and then yarned over and went through both loops. So that is a single crochet, and I just did that all the way across. Once I got to my last chain, I just did one more single crochet like normal and then that is the first row of single crochets and to move on to the next row I chained one and then I flipped my work over and instead of going through chains this time I went through stitches so that is just the chain braid looking thing at the top and instead of going to the stitch I was in I went into the stitch next to it and then I just did a single crochet and I did the same thing all the way across and all the way up until I ended up doing 15 rows of single crochets. So for this batch, I did 15 rows because it was also about five to five and a half inches long. And so the goal is to kind of like, kind of make a square shape, kind of rectangle shape. So on the last stitch of the 15th row, I did a single crochet like normal, but then I cut off the excess yarn, which I had done already, and then I made a chain, but instead I pulled all the yarn through to tie the knot. The only knots I'd be tying in my life. Moving on to the orange batch, I decided to use my favorite stitch, half double crochet. Half double crochet and I just go way back and it's just always there for me, you know? For this batch, I did the same thing. I began with a slip knot and started making chains and I also ended up with 14 chains for this foundation. To create a half double crochet, Instead of going into the chain immediately, I yarned over, then went into the next chain. Yarn over, came out, and this time I had three loops on my crochet hook, and then I yarned over and went through all three. So again, 
I yarn over first, then I go into the chain, yarn over, come out, then have three loops, and then yarn over and go through all three loops. So I just have double crocheted all the way across. When I finish doing my last half double crochet to finish off that first row, I chained two instead of one like before. And then I flipped my work over to move on to the second row. And then again, I just did half double crochets in the stitches this time, because obviously there are no chains. And I did that all the way across and ended up creating 12 rows and fastened it off just like before. The yellow batch was the double crochet, my least favorite stitch, but it's also annoyingly just there. To start this off and to make a double crochet, what I did was I wrapped the yarn around my crochet hook and then I went into the chain, grabbed some yarn, came out, had three loops, and then grabbed some yarn, went through the first two loops, and then yarned over and went through the last two loops. So you just add an extra step from the half double crochet. So again, you go through the first two loops and then the second two loops. One more time, yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, have three loops, yarn over, go through the first two loops, and yarn over and go through the last two loops. And then I basically just did that all the way across. When I finished doing my last double crochet, I chained two, flipped my work over, and instead of going into that first stitch right there, that one, you're going to go into the next one, and this is to prevent your work from expanding. It's a weird crochet difficulty that occurs, but basically from here, I just double crocheted in every stitch for every row until I ended up having nine rows for this yellow batch. And then I fastened it off like every other colored batch. For the black colored patch, the stitch is known as the Elizabeth stitch, which is basically like many mutated single crochets. I ended up creating 15 chains, but then I also added one, two, three, and four more chains to create 19 chains total, which seems a lot, but I'll show you why. So to create the Elizabeth stitch, what you have to do is that you have to go into the fourth chain from your hook and then you're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then you'll have two loops on your crochet hook. But then you're going to yarn over, go through, and then come out with some more yarn again. And then you're gonna end up with four loops on your crochet hook. Then you yarn over and go through all four loops. And then to finish off that little stitch, you just chain one. And then when you want to go to make your next Elizabeth stitch, you just skip one chain and you go into the next one. And again, so you yarn over, pull through, you have two loops. Then you yarn over, go into that same chain again, yarn over, pull through, and then you'll have four loops, and then yarn over and go through all four. And then chain one to finish that stitch off. And then basically you just do those Elizabeth stitches all the way across. So after doing my last Elizabeth stitch of that row, I still had one chain left right there. And so what I just did was I just did a normal single crochet and it doesn't really make a difference. And then to move on to the next row, I chained two, flipped my work over, so as you can see, you have the gaps in between whenever you skipped a chain to move on to the next one. So you're going to be working inside each of those gaps to create an Elizabeth stitch. So instead of chains or stitches this time, you're just going through each of those gaps created in between each of the Elizabeth stitches from the last row. And essentially you do this for every row and I ended up having 14 rows total. Only a little bit of hair fallout to go because this is the second to last batch, which are the green ones with the primrose stitch. And that is, in my opinion, the prettiest stitch, but it's also the least practical because the cold air just kind of passes through. But we're not focused on making a warm cardigan here, am I right? So I started this off with 15 chains and then to begin this all together, I went into the next chain and made a single crochet. Then I chain two, and inside that same chain, I made another single crochet. 
Then I skipped one, two, and then into that third chain from the hook, I made another single crochet inside of that, and then chain two, and made another single crochet inside that same chain. So I repeated this process. Again, you skip one, two chains, and into that third one, you repeat that process. And I did that all the way across. And then once I had my last like little cluster, I guess, I made one single crochet in the last chain. And this is basically not really the first row, it's like the half row. And let's call it the little green hills. To move on to the third, the next part, you chain three. And kind of like the Elizabeth stitch, you're not going through any chains or stitches, you're going through gaps. And those gaps are those little green hills you made. So you're going to make a double crochet in those and not just one you're going to make three double crochets in each of those little hill thingies so basically you're going to end up with clusters of three double crochets in each of those gaps So again, once I did the three in one gap, I just moved on to the next gap and did another three double crochets. So once I was done doing my last cluster of double crochets, the first row, which I know is like two rows, but the first row of the primrose stitch was complete. And moving on to the second row, I chained two and it was time to make those little green hills again. So I skipped two, uh, two stitches and made a single crochet and then chain two, and then made a single crochet in that same stitch. And then I skipped two stitches, and in that third stitch from the hook, I made a single crochet, chain two, and I repeated that same process. Then the next part, I did the clusters of the double crochet, and I ended up doing five rows of the primrose stitch, even though it's technically 10 rows, but it's five rows of that. And then I cut off the excess yarn and fastened it off like normal. This last batch here is a doozy because it's a mix of the red and black yarn. And even though it looks intimidating, it's actually not. And let me show you why. So the secret to it is that you're using both the red and black yarns together. And so basically it's the same thing. You just create a slip knot and then I ended up chaining 13 chains for the foundation of this batch and because the half double crochet is my favorite stitch of course I use this stitch to make this batch of the red and black mix and then I ended up creating 10 rows total of it after making 10 red 12 orange 14 yellow 10 black 14 green and 12 of the black and red mixed patches and a whole Chinese show later during the start of college. In simpler terms, over a span of two and a half weeks, I finally finished the 72 patches. But hold up, I still had more crocheting to do right as the wrist cramps started to come in. So yeah, all the patches were done, but I had to create the ribbing. Red was the signature color of the entire cardigan, so of course the ribbing was red too. First on the ribbing checklist were the sleeve cuffs. I began making seven chains, but really anything that measured about three inches. To make the first row, I made half double crochets, yes, again, in each of the chains. Once I was done creating my last half double crochet, I chained two and flipped my work over. But to get that ribbing effect, this is where I'm about to spill the tea. Now, when I crocheted all those patches, not counting the ones that I had to go through the gaps, I usually went through a stitch, which was this right here, kind of like this braid looking thing. But each of those stitches has a back loop and a front loop. So to get the ribbing effect, I made my half double crochet in the back loop. I basically did that for every stitch and every row until I ended up with 20 rows making about 30-ish centimeters or 12 inches. 
The last step was to attach the two ends together, and to do that, I used slip stitches. So basically what I did, I went through both ends, and then I yarned over, came out, and then I had two loops and went through both, even though you couldn't see that because it immediately went through. So both sides, yarned over, and then went through the loops together like so. So again, you go through the two sides, yarn over, come out, you have two loops, and then you go through the two together. And okay, that wasn't the last step, sorry, because you will need one more identical sleeve cuff since we have two arms. Unless you don't, and you have three. Then you make three. You get the point. The last thing on the ribbing checklist was the bottom ribbing, border ribbing, I don't know, um, the long one, basically. Essentially for this, I did the exact same thing, the whole half double crochet is going through the back loop, except I had 10 times as many rows. But I will say though, I ended up adding more, around 50 more, and I will show that later because we will come back to that later. Welcome to the floor, featuring my ugly tan color carpet with a blue and red stain I made while trying to attempt a Bob Ross painting. With my 70-ish something patches, I set up the layouts for the following panels. The back side, the two front panels, the right and the left, and the sleeves just like the pattern instructed. To attach these little beasts together, there were two ways I could have done it. The first was with a darning needle. The darning needle technique is a pretty self-explanatory technique since it requires basic sewing skills of going back and forth and attaching the patches. But I ended up using the second technique with a crochet hook and those handy dandy slip stitches I used to attach the two ends of the sleeve cuffs together because I found this technique the easiest and the fastest for me. I also found that the most efficient way to attach everything together was to patch up a row of patches first then attach that row to the rest of the work. I did this for all of the panels, but for the sleeves, there was an extra step. After creating the two sleeve panels, like the sleeve cuffs, I slip stitched the two ends together so that the length of the sleeves were three patches long. The whole process was kind of like building blocks, you know? Minus the blocks, add the yarn, and multiply the amount of wrist cramps by two. Once the patch up was completed and the panels were ready, the easiest part of this, I don't know why I'm putting so much commitment into this, but I also love Harry, project was next, joining the panels. I was thinking, this is supposed to be the other way around, god damn it. <laughs> I have to take all the stitches out. With all the panels created, the plan was to attach each piece like so. Sew up the sides of the front panels with back panel, but leaving a length of two patches unattached. Then sew the top of the front panels with the back side of the corners, but leave a length of one patch unattached. Lastly, attach the sleeves. I know y'all got <laughs> none of that, but let the diagram explain me better. Also, if you thought you were a smart aleck because you cut the sleeves and were about to rat me out in the comments, congrats, you're correct. The sleeves are indeed screwed up there, and that was because of a mistake I made before by attaching the long side of the sleeves together. So yeah, just like ignore that for now. Kind of like how some people ignore the fact that we're living in a pandemic. The skeleton of the cardigan was complete, so the only things left were the finishing touches, which were the ribbing, the button band, and the collar. So to attach the ribbing, I actually used the darning needle technique. 
I started with the sleeve cuffs first, and as depicted, the sleeve cuffs were minuscule compared to the patched up sleeve. So the only thing to do was to bunch up the bigger sleeve as I sewed the pieces together like so. And that is the reason why I chose to do this with a darning needle instead of a crochet hook. I have this much of space left of the cuff and I have a whole patch. So we're gonna attempt to fit this all in. <laughs> After fastening it off, I did the same thing to the other sleeve and moved on to the bottom border long ribbing thing. I attached this similarly without needing to bunch up the fabric and like I mentioned eons ago, this ribbing piece wasn't long enough, so I ended up adding a few more rows until it was the length I needed it to be, and then I attached it to the cardigan like normal. The button band was the outlier of this entire cardigan, and because of it, I literally went through a midlife crisis deciding whether or not I wanted to stick to my neutral roots and do black, or follow the pattern and do blue. But just guess who ended up stepping out of her comfort zone? To make it look like I sewed a button band on, I began the first row with slip stitches down one side so that it gave this crisp, clean look. And then at the end, I chained one and for the second row, I made single crochets. But here and there, like about every three stitches or so, I skipped like one stitch because it started curling and no one likes curly crochet. For the third row, I started with a couple single crochets, but to make a button band, you need button holes. So I ended up chaining two, one, two. Then I skipped two stitches and in the third stitch from my crochet hook, I single crocheted and then continued to single crochet till the next button hole. And there was no specific pattern to where I created the buttonholes because I eyeballed them where I saw them in the OG cardigan and just picked a spot along the band until I ended up with six buttonholes. For the fourth row, I also began with a couple single crochets, basically just enough until it came to the buttonhole. But inside the buttonhole, I made two single crochets like so. So kind of like crocheting into the gap, like for those patches. I then made a single crochet in the stitch after the buttonhole, and then I skipped a stitch so my work didn't become curly, and then continued doing that same technique all the way across every time I came across the buttonhole. Now, mind you, your work may not end up curly because you're probably better than me, but if it does, just skip some stitches to decrease the number of stitches. For the final row of the buttonhole button band, I basically just slip stitch across to also create a nice crisp line. And by the way, the buttonhole band I made was on the left side of the cardigan, and by the left, I mean my left while wearing the cardigan. For the right side, I did the exact same thing, but I just did not add any of the buttonholes, so the whole single crochet slip stitch thing was the same. And then with that complete, it was time to sew on the buttons. Now, when buying these buttons, my brain didn't register the fact that the holes on my buttons were too small for my one and only darning needle. And because the darning needle couldn't go through, that meant I couldn't attach the buttons with yarn. So I had to use skinny string with a skinny needle. And when sewing the buttons on, I lined up the buttons with the button holes so that they were in line and ended up sewing the crap out of those buttons onto the button band because I was scared the skinny yarn would like muddle its way through the holes of the crochet stitches and like come out because who the heck uses skinny string on thick string? Me, clearly. But thankfully it ended up working out and the button holes and the buttons were happy in their relationship. Something I can never relate to. The last part. At this point, I was about to lose my mind with how long this was taking and how much work I had put into it. Kind of like those college applications. The collar was also red. And like the button band, I began the first row with slip stitches. Chaining one, I moved on to the next row. And to do that, I made single crochets into the red slip stitches all the way around. I continued the single crochets for every row until I got a size of a collar that I liked, which was about 9 rows of single crochet, but I guess it would be 10 if you include the row of the slip stitches. 
and then there we go i got my cute looking collar i was actually really impressed because i never made a collar before and i thought it would require like complicated crochet stuff but it didn't yay now i wouldn't call this the last step because the only thing left to do was to hide away the sticking out piece of yarn with a crochet hook and cutting off the excess but i wouldn't be lying if i said i mostly just cut them all off the collar, the button band, the ribbing, the sleeves, and the entire cardigan was beautifully and amazingly complete, immaculate, and whole. And at this point, I was done. But there was just one problem. One tiny problem. It was too big. And I know, I know, you're probably like, um, this is supposed to be baggy. Well, the thing is, I'm a skinny legend. And there's a huge lack of thickness going on in my area. So this trendy baggy cardigan looked like I was wearing a triple XL sweater that an 80 year old mother made for her unmarried beer belly son that lived in her basement and lived off of cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets from McDonald's. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just, it's not what I'm going for. So to fix that, I had to shrink some areas. I was satisfied with the length and the width of the cardigan, but the sleeve area was just too big and unflattering. And to combat this dilemma of mine, I decided to tuck in one row of the patches. I really didn't know what I was doing, I was really just experimenting, so to stay on the safe side, I made these big stitches with a darning needle to see how it would all work out. And you best believe, I was sweating trying to figure out the confusing part which was the armpit area. And after multiple examinations and experimentations, I folded the armpit area like so, and then sewed through it. I checked to make sure things were good by flipping it back to the right side, and then when it was, I flipped it back to the wrong side to actually sew it. I kept the big stitches as a guide, and then with some new string, Starting from the cuff, I made smaller stitches and made my way to the armpit. And then when that was done, I cut out the guide. And then I cut out the yarn with the smaller stitches and knotted that off really well so that it was nice and secure. And then all that was left was to repeat the entire process for the other sleeve. Lo and behold, I didn't look like a 40 year old chicken nugget eating dude living in his mom's basement anymore. And though I was hesitant with the style of this cardigan while I was making it, now that it was complete, I was actually really satisfied and ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. So, you know, maybe a month and a half's work and a few manic episodes were worth it. I ended up pairing this cardigan with a black turtleneck, some black jeans, and some Doc Martens to help balance this funky cardigan with my, what I think is my dark slash light academia aesthetic. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope this video helped you out in channeling your inner Harry Styles fangirl into a cardigan. And if you don't apply to the fangirling checkbox, then nonetheless, I hope this video helped you out in how to crochet a chunky cardigan. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Toodles.